Hey, what do you say? This is Boz at Men Speaking Out. And uh, we are talking about a very um, hot topic tonight. Uh, the topic in itself is uh, called The Impact of Critical Race Theory. Now, uh, before we get going, I like to always introduce my guests. And I'm going to start uh, from the top middle. And I got a uh, BJ. What's going on, BJ? How are you doing? How you doing, Boz? Everything's very fine. good. Very good. I got a uh, a, a newbie on the, on the show, my man James. We've been we've been friends. Uh, I guess I could say roughly about sixteen years when I met yeah, James. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. sixteen cool. years, and I'm and I'm very happy you, you're here, James. Thank you. I, I'm I'm happy to be here. Right on. In the middle there, I got my man Tori, the, the master barber. Uh, what's going on, Tori? <laughs> How y'all doing, and everybody on the panel? All yeah, right. Okay. And last but not least, and least but not last, I got my brother Abdul Hakim Shabazz, who is the uh, the owner and political blogger of AnyPolitics.org. Hey, Abdul. Always good to be here. Right on. I appreciate you. And, hey, and, can, you go? can I say something real quick? Yes. I'm a big fan of Abdul. I've always been a big fan of him. When when, when Abdul was on, uh, when he came on, when you came on Amos yeah. years ago, I, I used to listen to Amos, and I didn't like it. And then when you came on, I loved it. And then when you got off, <laughs> I quit listening. Okay, right so on. Lots of other people. So just, <laughs> just, just let you know, man. It's all right on. Me. And last but not least, I have my my precious daughter, my my uh, the last of my bloodline, uh, Kyla Shabazz. Hey, Kyla. Hey, Dad. <laughs> all right. So tonight. We are talking about the theory, I'm sorry, the impact of critical race theory. So before we get started, let me just go ahead and start with this, um, some low education. What is it, right? Critical race theory is an academic concept that's more than 40 years old. The core idea is that race is a social construct, and that racism is not just a product of individual bias or prejudice, but it's also systemic and embedded in our legal, political, economic, and sociology so society that states patterns of racism that are ingrained in all of these modern institutions. Okay, would you agree so far with that no. comment? No. Yes. Yep. No. Yes. Okay, Abdul, why wouldn't you agree to what I just said? Because I don't think the issue is race. I think the issue is more. I think the issue starting out as race. I think the issue nowadays is more income and social status. <laughs> Because, for example, take take Bill Cosby, for example. Bill Cosby had the money and the economic resources to basically, you know, beat, beat the rap, to, to, to appeal, to go to the appellate court, to go to the Supreme Court, and, and eventually, you know, be found, I won't say not guilty, but they found out they introduced inf evidence that they shouldn't have done. And so from that perspective, it wasn't a race thing, that was an income thing. It, it had Bill Cosby been poor and white, Bill Cosby would still be in jail. Okay. So you don't think that... Bill Cosby is an anomaly of, 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 of black folks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's an outlier, right? So I'm not simply saying that, you know, everybody don't have Bill Cosby money. I know I don't. You know, I would love to have it, but I don't think anybody on this panel is, is, is trying to buy CBS or, or anything like that, right? And that's So I'm just saying not everybody has the resources or the finances to be able to get themselves, you know, or shall I say uh, legally free from the situation. Come here. That's why I argue it's income, not necessarily race. Come here. Okay. All right. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to it. Let me finish my yeah. uh, intro around this. Okay. So basically, this is a, a quote from Kendall Thomas, who is a co-editor of Critical Race Theory, the key writings that formed the movement. Uh, he states, Critical Race Theory is an effort really to move beyond the focus of finding fault by racists, motives, racist bias, racist prejudice, racist hostility, and hatred to individuals, and looking at a ways in which racial inequality is embedded in structures and ways which we are very often unaware. So let's talk about that for a second. All right. You got two people, right? One part, one black, one white. Two people go into a store. One, the white man goes to the store first and the black man follows. The white man gets, how can I put this? He gets, uh, hey, how am I help you? He gets asked for service first. Now, does the black man feel that, hey, you should have, you know, you should have helped me out first while you, while you go to him? Or vice versa, if the black man gets help first 
and the white man comes behind him, does the black man feel that, hey, I didn't ask for your help. Why you follow me around the store? So in some, in some eyes, that's deemed as racist. Me, the solution is whoever comes in the store first. <laughs> that's how you handle it. Hey, but, Jamil, Jamil. Go ahead. Okay, so from what I've researched on critical race theory, it's basically the study of systematic discrimination. Correct. That's what it is. Okay, so this is a conversation that's been going on since the 1500s. This is nothing new. Uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, uh, W.D. Du Bois, Booker T., Malcolm Martin, Bill Cosby, like you just brought up. Everybody's been talking about the same thing. So this is nothing new. The, the the resolution to systematic racism, racism is us deciding that we're fed up with it and we're going to do something about it. Okay. Does that make any sense? It makes sense. So, I so, ask it. so, so, so uh, uh, until we decide, we black folks decide that we care more about each other than anything else and they're going and the white man is not coming to fix our problems they're, they're not it's not going the government is not going to fix our problems we've been given a, a, a outline to fix our own to fix a solution so let me let me ask you all something how did the white man come up through um through the by putting public policies into place to oppress, uh, also special funding, uh, like you say, when you're looking at policing, they were they were put in charge of policing, and then they also was put in charge of uh, the court systems. So all of this is a a legal systematic. My thing is that for one, I like to communicate. So first, we have to when we say racism. I hear what Abdul is saying, and and I understand what he's where he's coming from. But when you're looking at racism, it's based on a race, and then when you're talking about race is race um, oppression, they want to make it seem like it's two it's two different things, which one does play a part in the other. So when you have racist, that means you are more prone to be to, for a certain group of, type of people, your race. If you're Chinese, you're Chinese. If you're black, you're black. But when you're having racism, that's when you're starting to oppress people by and, and putting a certain class of people ahead of others. So once we can understand that, then we can move forward and not miscommunicate on what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Well, Real I didn't, quick. I didn't. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Let me tell you, BJ. I mean, what I read, I didn't think uh, it's it's a total different theory. I think uh, when they talk about race, the theory basically saying is that first of all, everybody is even, which means we're the human race first. So that makes everybody even playing field, and that's why it's saying that how it's set up now based on biology, physical uh, traits and uh, other types of things from a biological standpoint that the whole thing system is wrong. And first you have to say that you are first the human race to make everybody even, then set up the system so that everybody can prosper. Correct. So that's what I get. Yeah, well, that, that, and, and that sounds good, but the reality of it is, yeah, the reality of it is, 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 is we're not we're, we're we're not looked as as being everyone to being equal, right? Or on a level playing field. We should be. We Correct. should be. I'm not. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking that. But before I get any further in this discussion, I want to play this video real quick because okay. I want you all to hear um, this come from a professor at Princeton, and um, she definitely breaks down a little bit. Uh, maybe about a minute and a half video of critical race theory. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the video now. Can you turn it up, some Shabazz? Right. So 
The victories of the movement, which we all know, are found in federal legislation, Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, but also in anti-discrimination laws, essentially laws that declared Jim Crow policies unconstitutional. So after that moment, we began to understand, uh, of course, that Black people suffered many other forms of injury and had many systems of, of disadvantagement um, uh, and inequality in their lives. Right? So legislatures and municipalities and organizations began to make specific efforts to target African Americans with programs to address current and past discrimination. And they faced a major conservative backlash. And the way that backlash was, was formed was saying, well, if you make programs to target the discrimination experienced by Black Americans, and you don't include me, white person, then you are discriminating against me, right? And so they begin to attack programs like affirmative action and upper bounds, et cetera. And the Supreme Court of the United States then really fails the civil rights movement by basically treating targeted programs to address racial inequality as the same form of discrimination as Jim Crow laws, right? That they are both are subject to immediate scrutiny, uh, the strictest scrutiny. So, okay, so we get to this point, and then civil rights lawyers and scholars begin to talk about how we have to be able to address subordination, injustice, not just color consciousness. It's not enough to be colorblind. We actually have to be able to address injustice and subordination if we're going to have legal racial equality. And that's the heart of critical race theory. How to think about law, legislation, policies that will substantively respond to racial inequality. And they began to bring multiple forms of analysis to the table. History, narrative, um, gender, uh, class, showing all the insidious ways that discrimination and inequality has been sedimented in American society, right? And then it blooms in multiple directions, but it is literally just a way of understanding the mechanics of racial inequality and how the law might be imagined to address them. There we go. Right. So I want to make sure I shared that because I want to have a very clear defined definition, of course, to this uh, Dr. Amani uh, Perry from Princeton. You have to disagree with the doctor. Because okay, well, why, you, why do you disagree with the doctor? Because the research I found basically said, uh, first of all, uh, for, for a couple of things for people who may be watching this or listening for the first time, uh, critical race theory is a subject that is taught either in graduate school or law school. It is not taught through like K through 12 education. That is So all this you know, people say, hey, you can't teach in you know, elementary school or high school. It's ridiculous because it's not taught that way. It is a subset. It, it, it is graduate school level work. First, of all, that's kind of point number one. Point number two on critical race theory is that um, there, there's, a, there's a song by, by Bruce Hornsby in the range called That's Just the Way It Is. And the, and the line in the, in the Bruce Hornsby song says they passed law in 64. A few of those who ain't got a little more, but only goes so far because law doesn't change in others' mind when all he sees is a hiring line. There's a line on the color bar. So in other words, although the law may have changed to you know, eliminate discrimination, you can't necessarily change somebody's heart or somebody's mind. And so what, so what critical race theory looks at is a bunch of political scientists and, and lawyers and folks got together back in the early 1980s. They said, okay, it's been 15 years since the Civil Rights Act and since the Voting Rights Act. Why haven't things changed? The law has changed, but why haven't things changed? So critical race theory looks at those things other than the law to see why the situation is the way they say it is. So that's kind of that's kind of my point. I want to just, just kind of clear that up a little bit. No, I mean, uh, go ahead. Hold on. In, 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 in uh, telling everybody who Abdul is, we, we must say, you, everybody must understand he's a lawyer. So we can't get our feelings caught up with facts. So I respect Abdul, because I understand where he comes from. There's a way that you can look at something and get emotionally caught up and say, this is how it should be, but don't take the time on, on how it's written and how it's implemented. And that's the way Abdul looks at it. So let, let, let me say this. Let, let, me, let me tell y'all something I learned from Abdul. Oh, Lord. Go ahead. <laughs> don't give him, his, head's, his head's already big. Don't give him no big head now. It, it, it's, it, it's a two-fifth story. Abdul, you said this on the, on the 
Amos show uh, years ago. If you graduate high school, if you pursue a secondary education, and if you wait till you marry before you have kids, your chances of living in poverty is zero. Actually, your, your chances, you're, you're, you're 90 percent there. If you, right. if you're right, if you if you graduate from school, get a job, wait to have, get married to have children, your chances of being in poverty drop 80 percent. Right. And, and so, so OK, so once OK, once we do that. Uh, here's the three things that we need to do to get out of the rut that we're in. You need to get some uh, real estate. You need to get sure. some insurance. And you need to get some stock. This is not rocket science. White folks are not smarter than us. They just play the game a lot, like a lot longer than we played it. Oh, hold on. Okay. Does, does, does wow. it make sense? Can, Go ahead, Kyle. Or, can we kind of like refocus the conversation a little bit because I just kind of want to figure out what exactly we're talking about. This, so I don't really know what to comment on because we're kind of just jumping from topic to topic. Okay, okay, okay. I, 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 thank you. I respect that. Mm -hmm. To me, this is critical race thinking. It's speaking the truth about what we need to do. Everybody's looking for the solution to fix our issues. Now, okay. I don't think that's it. No, that's no, that's no, a no, way no, to get no, out of poverty. In order to come up but with not, the solution to the issues, though, you have to identify the issues and know what's causing them. And, you know, that's what critical race theory examines. It's not like an answer. It's just a perspective, a way to go about thinking about a certain type of issue or something. It's basically just talking about how all of this is just a social construction. And the social construction has been used to oppress people of color throughout history. You wanna talk about where it started, we can go all the way back to colonization. The question you asked earlier about how do white people get put on? It goes all the way back to colonization. The colonized basically the whole entire planet. <laughs> That's how they got put on and they stayed on since then because of that. It has nothing to do with whatever we did wrong or something or nothing like that. When you haven't had access to certain things from the beginning, then like, why would we have a clearer distribution now? You know, I want to I want to echo that, though, real quick, because, you know, in the 1930s, for example, 1930s, redlining took place. Right. Let's talk about that for a second. 1930s. Right. Redline damn near 100 years ago. Red line took place where they redlined poor financial areas so that the banks would not even go in and give those folks mortgages. Right. So now that still exists today. But it, that's when that's when it started. OK. And and who were the what were the demographics in those areas? People that look like us on this call. So. If we sit and think about that for a second, now I'm not, I'm not saying I said real, critical race theory is the framework. Okay, that's that's all. That's basically what it is, in so many words. Okay, but if you sit and think about that for a second, think about you going to school. Think about you, you know, uh, where you where we grew up in Chicago in the segregated neighborhoods. Well, Abdul can relate to this. Now, obviously, we found a way out of that, but there are some people that. James, this kind of goes back to you, that never, ever will have the opportunity to get married. All they know is having babies out of wedlock because that has been ingrained and that is a generational curse. Mm -hmm. That stems from not having the advantages that some of us on this podcast has have had. So how did, how did that happen? James, do you understand like when we're, what we're talking about? And Abdul is in his thought process, he's absolutely right. Mm. And I have a thing uh, about Abdul, I say, and I love him to death. I said, Abdul, yeah, yeah, Abdul yeah. has the, the Jesus, the Jesus oh, complex. Oh, oh, like, oh, I fix no. this. <laughs> but it takes, it takes a village to raise one. So yeah, Abdul yeah. had the, the, the right foundation from home he had to a great break daddy. a lot of things yeah, that was put in mind. place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, when you understand, when you're looking at the projects where I grew up in, the Warner Homes in Peoria, Illinois, 
that was where the United States government had a, when the war, the people from World War One came home, they needed housing, right? And they put these people there. And then when they said, "Okay, we're going to start giving these people loans and start creating the suburbs," mm -hmm. they started actually watching the the. They actually started watching the behavior of animals, and they understood that. If you put animals, if the animals in its natural habitat, they will be fine and work freely. But when you start putting them in a small confine, confinement and take away the resources, they got more vicious. Mm -hmm. So within that being said, a lot of the wars, a lot of the uh, revolts in America from black people a lot of them came after wars mm -hmm. because these men came home and they still didn't have the right to vote. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then, yeah, and yeah. then after they put after they then took the white soldiers and put them in the suburbs, they put welfare in and put poor black people in there and didn't of give course. them resources nor jobs because at this time you have when you read in the newspaper you have colored ads and white ads to uh, uh to file for jobs and then when you put welfare you says that your man cannot live at home so that takes the father out of the equation so therefore there's no structure so now you're creating a generational curse. So when I'm looking at uh, uh, racial um, critical thinking, I'm looking at dissecting, not just teaching Jim Crow laws. Go in and see the effects of what it had and who it affected. So, and I truly understand this, and this is a major point. You are the total sum of your experience in life. And if you lack compassion, um, empathy for somebody else who has a different experience, then you do not have a humane way of looking at life. Okay. So Tori, so Tori, so Tori, so, I, yes. I agree with everything you just said, 100%. Okay, so I work at Lowe's and, and a lot of times uh, customers get upset and everybody wants to point the blame well, who messed up my my ideology is for, forget who messed up let's fix it so that's my same approach to uh sociology ideology I, we, we we know who messed up we, we we know what happened so okay let's fix it so that's 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 the approach i was uh, bringing up when what i do taught me on the radio and what you taught me and you've been in your barber chair all the time and what Jamil taught me, we have the answers. We wow. have the answers. We just got to implement it. So, I, I, so I, I hear you, implement. James, but no, no. Because I teach my kids this. And, and you're, you, you, you're there. You're there. All right. So I teach my kids the way to, pro to solve a problem is first identify there's a problem. Correct. Then you have to go back and see how the problem came about. Correct. Then we can come up with theories on how to fix a problem. But we cannot identify a problem, then fix it. And this is what I like about the concept of uh, uh, racial uh, critical Preparation. thinking is, uh, theory is. Because we're taught certain histories but we don't see the we don't really quite understand the full ramification of it so when you're looking at 1964 like abdul was talking about what people don't understand that gave us a sense of false freedom when we had right. our black neighborhoods so gotcha. because of uh uh you know segregation purposes so Go ahead, when we had those those when we had it after 1964 and they saying that now you can go live where you want to live and most people don't even know that before 1964 there was no such thing as property taxes 
So on for you secretary. already had a set up a system that was set up that certain black people could not even apply for these jobs for years. <laughs> Then what's the effect when you say now, like what Abdul said earlier, and after 19, all right, 1965 is here, there is no more desegre uh, segregation. This decent Bill Cosby has already got his money. So right. he then took his money and moved it out to the suburbs where back before he, <laughs> he was living in the black community, the black neighborhood and his his money would have been put in the the black community so that somebody like addicts christmas addicts would have had the money that bill cosby was making but now he don't get that money the north north central gets that money right so they knew it, what they were doing i believe kyle wanted to want to comment kyle go ahead go ahead uh oh well, I just kind of wanted to go back to the original question when you were you had asked about whether or not systems in this country are inherently racist. And yes, they are. Because when the Constitution was written, a black person was only three fifths of a person. So therefore, in every single system that was created after that, racism exists, period. That's just what it is. <laughs> and we as a people have experienced the effects of those races of, of that racism the entire time this country has been founded in before so when you're even having like the whole comparison talk or whatever like you can't ignore the fact that there's been 300 plus years or whatever of segregation or or, or whatever or discrimination and you can't just say that it's not affecting our system today or that's not the reason why our people are in the place that they're in the society today I'm just like, it's impossible to say that race is not a, a huge determining factor in where we're at. And I want to also say when it comes to trying to fix these problems, I mean, I'm just going to to keep it a buck. We can't fix anything in these systems. The master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Therefore, the systems just need to be torn down and started over. These systems will never change. They were never meant to work for us in the first place. They will never ever be changed to work for us now. They need to be dismantled and started over. You, you know, you know and, what? You and know that, what? And that's where critical Kyle, race theory does. It dismantles, like I say, it keeps makes everybody an even playing field. Correct. That's why we have just one race, the human race. That's why it talked about. I know ideologically right now it ain't happening, mm -hmm. but the thing is, is that if you change people's mind to think that everybody's equal those equal opportunities will come to people who never had those opportunities and you know yeah financially bill cosby he's one of the few that that made millions of dollars uh acting entertainment because if you look at it uh most of the wealth in the black community are from entertainers and uh, that's it. You know, musicians, football, I think sports are entertainers. But, but and, I'm sorry, but, but like what you said, uh, BJ, those people don't even live in the black community. And so that's well, they what they did at to... one time now. They did Correct, at one time. At one time, they time did. Right. And but what I'm saying is just because they made it doesn't necessarily mean that they are not uh, in that same situation as being right. Uh, of the system that's being racist against them. I right. mean, I mean you know, it, it didn't didn't wasn't it LeBron James who who had the word uh you know niggas yeah, uh, shut on up his, and dribble. Yeah, 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 right there spray paint on his on his you know three fifty million dollar home whatever he had you know right. so no matter how much money he had guess what in the, the to his neighbors he was yeah still that see, you, you see what I'm saying yeah and you have to change the mindset because because here's the here's here's the main difference between a, a poor black man and a poor white man. The white man will always think they're superiors because of, because of the color of their skin. And that's where the racism starts because uh, we could be on the same, we, we could have, be in the same place, but that white person feels that he's better than you because he's white. And okay. BJ, B, BJ, BJ. Okay, so you, th you say that, but all of us on this panel know the truth. They're not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. In reality, because we, we, we so, financially so. we're on the same place. But if you walk in at a bank, 
they look at that white person and it'll be more apt to help that white person out. And that's where the racism starts. Because, because, <clears throat> because if I walk in, have a 400 credit score, they just kick me out and, and say, well, he's not working or whatever. If a same white guy that has a 400 credit score, they'll just say, well, okay, we'll work on your credit score and help. here's how you do it. Versus Listen, I, just, I, 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 I used to work at a bank. I used to work at a bank. I have to respectfully disagree with that. Right. And, and I disagree and, with that too. And, here, and here's why. Because a lot of things are success in this world is based on relationships. Correct. It's based on, you know, how mm -hmm. long have I known XYZ individual? For example, I have a very good friend who's a banker. Anything I need, we've known each other for like 30 years. It's like high school. Anything I need, I can call him up, get it done. We have a relationship. Not that, and he's white, I'm black, because we've, we've known each other for 30 years. So I, I respectfully disagree that, you know, if a black person automatically walks into a bank, or a white person automatically walks into a bank, they're going to, you know, be taken care of. But, but once again, it, it this is my, how can I say this? This is my, my issue. I will say America is not a racist country. America is a country that has racists in it. Let me, let me, let me just, let me raise your bottle real quick. Yeah, but see here's, and this is, this oh, is a Colin, you, disagree, you disagree with your uncle? Really? I'm uh, shocked. Because again, you are who you are. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, well, only, well, I, I will say, I mean, I guess it just kind of depends on what your idea of what makes this country what it is then. Is it its values and its morals or whatever it's supposed to be, its values and its morals? Is it actual practices of what actually goes on and has been going on since the founding of this country? Or is it um, our policies and the ideas that we express through the policies and the constitution and the things that we've written or whatever? Because if that's the case, I mean, when the Constitution was written, a black person was pretty fifth of the yeah. person. So, <laughs> well, I mean, the actually, ideals, I think actually, actually, I'm, I'm going to correct you on that one too, my dear, because the whole thing about three fifths of a person was actually not a southern thing; it was a northern thing, because they had to because they had to figure out the census, and so yeah. the question was, how do we count slaves? Do we count slaves as a full person? Do we count or the or, or not a person at all? And so the compromise was in slave states, African Americans were considered three fifths of a human being. So nonetheless, Property. not a whole person. Correct. So, okay. yeah. that, that was to offset. That was to offset because. And that's fine. But whatever it is for that time is fine. Nonetheless, it's racist. <laughs> Period. Right. So let me, it's a, it's a true story. This is a true story. And I'm going and I'm, and I'm to do it, I'll put this out there. I think I may have told Kyla about this, but I don't know. But anyway, Roughly about maybe about nine years ago, I had got a, a letter from the child support office saying that I owe X amount of dollars, you know. So I was like, this is this is insane. Me and her mom worked out things. I need for you. I contacted her mom and said, I need for you to come down and I need for you to let's go down there together and get this straightened out. OK, so the man in front of me in the child support office line, he was a, a, a this white man and he owed like five figures. And, it, and the, the woman at the front desk was like, you know what? It's okay. I know things happen. People get behind. And, you know, we'll uh, take this and I'm going to stamp it. And they'll work with you on getting caught up. I said, oh, okay. I said, it's just pretty nice then. So I go to the, now bear in mind now, their mom is right behind me. Right? So I get to the desk. I show her that I owe something. She said, well, just snaps off on me. Well, you should be a better father and taking care of your children. And this is ridiculous. And I don't, I, I, there's no excuse. And I said, well, wait a minute. I paid this already. Now, here I am. True story. True as it can be. Standing in line. I get treated like a piece of shit. And she said, the only way you can get this cleared up is if you have the mother here and we can get this taken care of. But other than that, you owe too much. I don't think she would do that. I turned behind me. I said, hey, sign this real quick so we can get the hell up out of here. <laughs> but she didn't know that this white woman behind me was the baby's mother, who's you know, my children's mother. So when I signed that, and when and she signed that, she was like, oh, oh, mm -mm. nothing she could do. But wait a minute now. Hold on for a second. Pump your brakes. This gentleman before me, oh, much more than me, and you gave him a free pass. But when I get to the counter, I'm a piece of shit. 
Yeah. So that's because she knew. That's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> Jimmy, my Jimmy, point right she, there. She knew that's me. the reality of it. Jimmy, 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 my, my point exactly is you could not discuss race with white folks. They don't get it. So yes, it's, it's, it's not our they job. They want to get it. It's, it's not our job to get them to understand what we're going through. You can. It's not our job, but you can like have the conversation. Yeah, you can make them aware. You can. I, I, and y'all both right. I hear hey, what hey. you're saying, James. Do you beat dead flies off a dead horse? You well, know I'm just saying? So never, my you thing is that you, uh, conversation, my, you can automatically write off every white person saying that they don't want to like no. understand. No. What I'm saying is it's not our job to convince white it's folks not. what we've been through. It's not our right. job to convince, to teach, to nothing. But I'm so, just saying it is possible to have the conversation. Okay, right. Okay, right. But what I'm saying is it's our job to convince us what we've been through. Let me ask Correct. you this. Yes. Yes. Let me ask you this. Yes. Let me ask you this. If, if I have, a, let's say, a, a credit score and I'm black that, that says that I can get $250,000 house. But the interest rate is about two points higher than my white counterpart. And Do I want the lower. house or not? Do I want the house or not? That's the question. I, I've seen that. I'll, I'll, I'll I've pay been it. In that. I, I, I have to pay it. But, but BJ, my white counterpart won't. Right, that's but what I'm B, saying. Those are these advantages. That's part of critical. That, critical race. That's, that. a part, that's, that's okay, 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 okay. So BJ, so I've been what there. What I'm saying is that this 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 race theory about it is supposed to break that barrier. But what I'm saying, right. hey. But what what I'm saying what I'm saying is, uh, no no I'm no. Saying, I'm sorry, James 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 James. I don't mean to cut you off, but I want I want to explain this to BJ. You're getting caught up in what it should be, and it will never be what you're saying. Because you know what I'm saying. I hear what you're saying. And you're coming from how 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 life should work, humanity wise. No, but what it will do in this curriculum, once you listen to what Abdul said, was on a higher level. Once people knows and understand things, now you can have compassion. So therefore, we can now do what James saying what needs to be done because once you know your purpose and what you need to do, then you can start working forward because you're conscious of what you're doing. And a lot of the things black men need to understand, the fruits of your labor will not be seen by your eyes because you will put it in your mm -hmm. child. Exactly, so, exactly, exactly. Okay, exactly. Let's, let's, let's switch gears for a minute real quickly here, okay? So let me ask a question real quick. We're gonna because we I, I want to make sure that we all have uh, you know feedback to put in. Oh, by you, the way, for those of you guys just tuning in, you're listening to Men Speaking Out with my brother Jamil Hakeem, Jamil Dean Shabazz. He's the host of uh, of Men Speaking Out. Our guests today are BJ James Fee, his daughter Kyla, who's my I love her to death, even though she's wrong on almost everything, but she'll be a little bit better when <laughs> goes by. Troy Terrell and me, Abdul Hakeem Shabazz. Okay, dude, there you go. You got it. Right, there you go. That's the plug. There you go. Exactly right. So. Let's switch gears a little bit, okay? Do you think that critical race theory should be taught K through 12? No, no. Can I yeah. answer that question? Can I answer that question? No, because of what I just said. You, but, but you, why not? White folks can't understand racism. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's not, it's not a, I'm, I'm not, because I'm not, they were I'm never not, oppressed, correct? I'm not, I'm not. That's not because that's, that's you're a, talking about like feel it, I can get that. But as far as understand it as an educational topic, yes, they can. They are more than capable of understanding the dynamics of racism and the way that it works in this country. Maybe not on an emotional level, but on a logical understanding level, yes, they can. Anybody can learn about it if they put their mind to it. Yes, but they you, can. You can't you can't understand it if you don't live with it. So well, didn't I just say that? I just said maybe not. James, under let, let me say this, James. I hear what you're saying. Yes, you can. Let's look up these two words. You can have empathy and sympathy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I care about you, right? Right. You lose your mother. I still got my mom. I have empathy for you. 
because I don't feel the same as you. So I have sympathy. So by exposing, if, if, if there's a part of a white person spirit, once they understood what was told, because, uh, you know, we were lied to and they were lied to. You know what I'm saying? So some, there are there are white people who feel like, you know, eat, I, like I talk to Africans, me being a barber for 25 years, and they don't quite understand why we don't take advantage of the, ac the academic possibilities here. But when you understand, when I moved here, they told me, Tori, do not move to IPS. Mm -hmm. Do not move to IPS. You know what I'm saying? And people don't even know. In middle school, there's like three five points, five five star schools in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, there's three five point five star schools, and they're all in IPS. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, so now, the yeah. So now you got to understand how the system is set up because you can't be a regular person get into these schools. Well, I want to make sure I, I, I get the question answered from all the other folks on the panel. Do you think that it should be taught in K through 12? Tyler? Yes. Yeah, well, I can't, because I'm going to record, I verbally hear you say it because it's going to be recorded on audio. Yeah, my answer is, is yes. BJ? It's not like to the certain or certain extent, but like you can teach elements of it in K through 12. Yes. Gotcha. BJ? No, I don't think so. Not K through 12. Okay. Re oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Okay. Oh, and the reason being is, is that um, you don't want to plant the seed or mindset to say, hey, uh, from a white person, I have these advantages. And it might it might create a gap, a wider gap than what it already is right now. Okay, I think I believe James, your answer is no as well, right? Okay, but okay, Jabil, Kyla, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Who's, who's going to be teaching these courses on critical critical race theory? Who's teaching them? Capable teachers, I would assume. Qu qualified individuals, but the, within ra within racism already, you know that's not going to be an even playing field. Well, okay, well, hold for a second now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, but I feel like you can't automatically write off the ethics of a person based on their race. Like, you, just because a person is white doesn't mean that they can't teach a white classroom about racism. Um, what's her name's been doing it for years and years. Um. What's that woman's name who like does that seminar? The, the, the one woman. Oh, the uh, the no, red, the the red eye white that. woman. No, Blue eye, green eye. That's just the one woman that I know. I can't. Speak Jane Elliott. The the Jane Elliott. Elliott. Yeah, that's her. That's her. Jane Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. So here's no, no. Like, so people of other races are very capable of teaching things about other races. It, you don't have to be. Maybe you not to the emotional extent. Like yeah, a, a white person is not going to teach anything about emotionally experiencing racism. But at the end of the day, a white person doesn't need to understand emotionally 100% what it means to experience racism. All they need to be able to do is understand someone else's story and have empathy for that experience. Like period, that's all any of us can do. Do I need to be um, a Jewish person to have emp empathy for what happened to the Holocaust? No. <laughs> And have I been thoroughly educated to a certain extent on what has happened during the Holocaust by teachers who were not Jewish? Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, wow. and, and and okay, uh, James, to answer your question, is it yes or no? <laughs> Should it be taught through K through 12? No. Okay, no. Abdul, you believe no too is right, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm, a firm, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I'll take that back. I believe that uh, our history should be taught all the good and the bad, because if you don't learn the bad, that's why there's this whole mm -hmm. Donald Trump patriotic education nonsense crap. It's like, no, if, if you don't say the history, you're bound to repeat it. That's that's mm -hmm. a, 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 simple, a simple, straight axiom. No, no. Yeah. If you don't know yeah. your history, you're bound to repeat it, right? Well, no, if you, if yeah. you don't if you don't if you don't study it, you, you're going you're bound to repeat it. No, nah, I think well, that hold, comes hold, later, hold, 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 Hold up for just a quick second here, <laughs> because because my thing is this: I believe that we should teach history, teach the whole story, but it should be done in an appropriate manner. 
because I'm not going to tell a kindergarten that, hey, all white people are racist because that's not true. Right. Well, however, I also don't hold on, think hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Abdul, where does critical race theory comes and says all white people are evil? Well, no, hold on, hold on for a second. What, what I'm saying is, is that you can teach history. You can teach the good in our history. You can teach the bad in our history. As I argue, one of the nice things about America is well, eventually we get it right. We don't get it right all the time, but eventually we do. No. Exactly, hold on for a second here. However, I do think there's a difference between teaching the, the race issue to, like, say, third and fourth graders versus teaching somebody in middle school versus teaching somebody in high school versus teaching somebody in graduate school. And I agree with that part. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's a difference between the, the teaching the, you know, the 20, by, by niece who's going to law school, uh, there's a difference between teaching her critical race theory versus teaching my, my wife's nephew who's, like, only, like, four years old. There, there's a difference. Yeah. And so, therefore, you can, you can teach it, but it's got to be done in a certain way. At home, I would say, I would say, Abdul, I would say, starting, and you can, you know, because you just can't give everybody everything in one bite. So, starting about middle school, starting to understand, like you can teach a person the Jim Crow laws in the sixth grade. That concept is is, is starting to uh, to grasp. And I would argue, oh, sorry. if you're teaching well, Jim Crow, you're basically teaching to a certain extent critical race theory. Maybe not explicitly like saying this is critical race theory and this is what it is, but you're explaining how a, a U.S. system has oppressed a certain group of people, which right. is the essence of the theory. Right. Yeah, exactly. so, so, but I think, but I think right now so, with, with so, critical so, race theory so, taught in K through twelve. Well, so, I was thinking critical race. Oh, you want me to hold on? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna go back to you, BJ. But my, my point is, I th- everybody's right. But the problem we have is we we systematically want to think that the school system is gonna teach this to our kids. No. We have, to be, the ones. We have to be the ones to teach it to our kids. But I also, no, but I also believe, like, just as an American citizen, like the way that our democracy works is that we have the power to influence what's going on in public education. And if we have the power to ensure that critical race theory is taught, we should do that. It should be taught at home, Kyla. That, that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, hold on. I'm sorry because I, I'm sorry, but I feel like you're making a, a very common mistake of assuming that everyone at home is capable of teaching the dynamics of critical race theory or just that black people in general just because we are black we have the 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 skills and able to explain the situations just because based off our personal experience our own personal experience as black people does not cover the entire the entire situation and the entire argument i'm not saying the white folks folks don't know it i'm not you can okay hold on or they benefit from it but what I'm saying is that I think not in, in a high school setting, maybe in a high school or be, definitely in college, but like elementary, preschool, uh, middle school, I don't think it should be taught because what happens is, is that uh, the, the, the grasp or the, or the dynamics, I don't think kids will understand. Well, Paul, okay, okay. Well, that's, where, that's where I'm going to have to disagree with you because I also feel like what we're, what we're doing is underestimating the ability that kids have to understand certain types of issues and topics. The kids today, Gen Z, this is what they're talking about. Like all the stuff that's going on in the news, everything that's on TV all day, every day, this is not something that kids can just escape the way that they could when I was growing up. Like when I was growing up, this stuff wasn't on TV all day. It wasn't talked about necessarily. Or the way that I experienced school, it would have you thinking that racism ended back in in the 1960s and that everything was all fine and fair. And then all of a sudden, Trayvon Martin got shot. And then we didn't know what to do after that. And after that, my whole entire experience of racism in this country or whatever was completely changed forever. Wow. Well, 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 Kyla, you know, Kyla you, know, you, know, you know what you benefit from? You have an exceptional dad. You have an exceptional uncle. You you are on this panel with black folks that can- No, she's on a black race. man. She's on the black man panel. <laughs> right, right, right. And she's, she's the only girl in here, and she's holding her own. And, and, and you're, you're very impressive. 
Jamil, well, I, I would I would tell you all this. Kyla is the co-founder of Men Speaking I, Out. I, I know she she's yeah. she's bad. Yeah. But, 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 it's no but, disrespect, but I'm just giving her kudos because she earned the right to be where she's at. But but, but what I'm saying, Kyla, mm -hmm. you you're doing a great job, and I, I agree with pretty much everything you're saying. The only thing I disagree with is the fact that white folks cannot understand racism. But so okay, okay, so okay, okay. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. So I don't want to talk racism with white folks anymore. I, I I don't. I'm done. I want to talk empowerment with black folks. I, 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 but I just, you got to realize, James. I just want you to understand this. It's a panel, and like I said earlier, you took a per. You're at that point. You're taking it real personal. You, you, you because you're you're saying from your view. I'm not trying to say your view is right because it's just like Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali said, "There's fifty, there's uh, a thousand snakes out there in my house," you know what I'm saying? And one bite of them can kill me. Now, out of that thousand, a hundred good white, a uh, good snakes is out there. So he said, "I don't want no white people around me." That was his con That was his thought process. But I understand what you understand what you're saying. But now, what I'm trying to get you to see is that the system is built by them. So you're not going to get that. And even when we was in our lowest point, there was white people who still helped us. So, you know, like what and BJ and what BJ is saying, but it's, it's, it, it, it takes time. It's a, it's a system. Abdul's talking about how he went through some things and his, he, he got friends. You know what and, I'm saying? I can tell you how to add on. To add on to that, no progress with any like group of people that has ever been oppressed has ever been made without people from the group of the oppressors helping and being a part of the movement as well. I mean, I, unless I, I, we're I, trying I to start a revolution yeah. where black people run amok and just start killing everybody, I don't know how else we're supposed to get things done. <laughs> we're not the majority. We can't just start. What we have to do is educate each other. Education right. is the solution. We definitely me, do have to educate each other. Right, give me all, all, right. saying, Let me give you all I'm saying is that we sometimes assume that just because we have a personal experience and we're Black that we just know the whole story. And that's not true. You as a black person also have to educate yourself on your history and all that stuff too. It's not just something that we know. That's all and I'm trying to say. Like and, you have to also give you my, my, your own research and be aware of things too. Gotcha. <laughs> let me give you my, my my take on this. I believe that it should be taught in K K through uh, K through twelve. I believe critical race theory parts of it. No, actually, you know what? It needs to be taught at a young age. Very young age, and I'm gonna tell you why. When 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 our young black boys and girls are out there in them fields, they ain't start them off in at 18 years old, did they? They start they start having picking cotton at five, right? Exactly. So here's the thing: if you if if that's the situation, then then God damn it, it should be it. That's what it should be now. And, 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 and so let me ask you. Um, oh, sorry. Hold on, real quick, Dad. It's that um that quote from is from Denzel Washington says it in like Remember the Titans. And he's talking to the white coach and he was like, you know, when you're coddle, you're coddling these boys or whatever, what you're doing is you're crippling them. And when you're not teaching these kids or or teaching them about their history or trying to give them a little white version or whatever or something, you are crippling them. Because all of a sudden, one day I'm in the eighth grade and all of a sudden this country isn't what I thought it was when I could have known what the deal was this whole time. Or, or somebody had made the comment earlier about how if we teach these young white kids about advantages in society, then they'll somehow think that um, they have an advantage or whatever. But like, why is it automatically the result that if I find out about this advantage at this age, that means that I now know about this advantage that I have? Why isn't it? Oh, now I'm aware of how my existence in this society comes with privilege, and how can I now use that to help uplift other people who don't have the same privilege as I do? And if you start with that mindset at a young age, I just don't see how that can't be beneficial. And I'm telling you, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and your concept of life 
is through a you be, you've been protected. You know what I'm saying? So your father would not allow you to be in certain areas in certain situations. Now, what America is is what <laughs> America is. And they, they have shown what, what James is saying, that they are incapable of being fair. That's why paddling was being taken out because young black boys are being abused. That's just what it is. Real quick, don't want to interrupt, but just I uh, just want to make a comment on something that you just said. You cannot assume my story. You don't know it. <laughs> wow. Well, Kai, Kai, okay. Kai, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You just made the comment that I've been protected, but you Kai. don't know my story. I know your father. Hold on. Do you know my father? I don't know. Understand this. Hold on, Tori. Hold on, Tori. Hold on, Tori. No disrespect. No disrespect. No disrespect. Again, I'm not going to tell you that you didn't go through struggle. I'm not going to sit up here. I'm just pointing out. But now, what I will tell you, I know your father well enough, you know what I'm saying, that, yeah, he's going to come through and say, so you go through struggle and you learn, and I and I and I respect that. You know, I, I'm not I'm not making it a big deal. I just something to be mindful of. Okay, right. So, so, oh, so hey, just just a quick FYI. Oh, this, this what I'm oh, saying. Oh, for a second, just a quick FYI for those of you just listening in, tuning in, listen to Men Speaking Out, hosted by my brother Jamila Dean Shabazz, or guest today on the program, or BJ James P, my niece Kyla Shabazz, my my good Northwest Side barber Tori Terrell, and I'm Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Okay, now you can go ahead. So what? So what I'm saying is, Kyla, you you you're you're 100 right. But what is what's Tori trying to tell you, and what I'm trying to tell you is, you will never get the impact unless it came from the guy from the struggle. So so when I say who's going to teach us about critical race theory? Okay, I don't need somebody that don't know about, about critical race theory teaching me about critical race theory. That conversation has been going on for five hundred years. I've every I worked in the car business. This is what we talked about every day. It's not a secret. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's, we talk about race. We deal with racism all the time. The public don't deal with racism. But black folks, <laughs> come on, Tori. Black folks, we deal with racism and we talk about it all the time. So when you, when you say should it be taught in schools, okay, who's gonna teach it? Okay, how, how many how, how, how many how many black man teachers are there at school one hundred on thirty eighth and Shaylin? Well, we should probably do something about that. We should encourage more of our young black men to pursue educational degrees. All right. I hear what you're saying, right? But look at the graduation rate. Look at the graduational rate of the black male. So that, that, earlier, that, when I told you, like, we're 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 talking about we're not talking about the principal points, and the principal points is what law put what what law or what public policy put us where we at. That's what I'm thinking critical race theory is going to teach. What is, this is what the law was, and this is what the fallout is. So I, so James, what I'm saying from there, now we ain't trying to say and, and debate. We're trying to say, this is what happened. When Jim Crow law was in place, or like Shabazz said, the red line when you're looking at the red line abdul and tell me if i'm lying stop me when i if i do people don't know oklahoma when you're looking at tulsa oklahoma when it got bombed it came back it was bigger than when it was prior I, 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 but when red line stream came in they sent the highway straight through that thing just like they did in St. Uh, uh, St. Louis. So I'm thinking critical thinking, uh, critical racial critical uh, theory is going to teach all of these other things. And I, where I think at, I can go deeper and more involved, but I'm saying, all right, let's just do that. Let's right. just do, when you're saying the projects, 
and welfare. It affected more people. All right, let's just say cocaine. Ricky Ross, who got his money or his drugs from Ali North. Tor, we got a caller on a, on the call right. that's joined in. Levi, go ahead. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we Levi. hear you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, great, great conversation, gentlemen and, and lady. Um, it is uh, refreshing to hear so many wonderful ideas, but I'm just going to leave my two cents and I'm going to get out of here and maybe give you something to think about. The, the, we need to get off of the white people, what we need white people to understand, and we need to focus on what we need to understand as a people. We need to get off of everybody else and focus on opening up our own schools and opening up our own hospitals and rebuilding our own community. Focus on the things that we need to do and focus on home. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that you focus on home before you focus before you can do anything else, you focus. And I think that that's the that's what I see. I hear a lot of debate and I hear a lot right. of people aren't on the same page, but we all are on the same page when it comes to our children, providing them with educational opportunities, whether those opportunities are critical race theory, whether it's whether it's in the trades. We need to start focusing on what we can do to get these 12 and 13 year olds, get guns out of their hands and put a book in their hands. See, that's what we need to focus on. Preach, brother. Preach. I, that's, I where, that. that's where our focus needs to be. See, all this other stuff, it's all smoke and mirrors, man. Right. He's exactly right. He's, it's all yeah. smoke and mirrors. Right. And, and, yeah, and, and, yeah, but and if you keep, I, if you stay, if you, as long as you listen to CNN and all these other people in the Breakfast Club, they gonna have you with smoke and mirrors because that's what they get paid to do. We need to get back to the community, focus on the community, and and focus on our children, man, and focus on what we're trying to accomplish. I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity you all letting me speak. Hey, that wow. brother it was a hundred percent right, and that's well, what I've been saying. I, I, here's I, the I, thing: I, I agree with everything you just said. All right, here we go. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna shift gears. We're gonna, we're gonna, I got a series of questions I want to ask you all, and but that, well, that's your question. Before, before you do that, let me just say I, I agree with him. It's, it does take a grassroots effort, uh, <laughs> but but again, we gotta we gotta we gotta make make sure that what we're teaching our young kids that our pitfalls and then also so, so, something as simple as uh, the voting rights those types of things are the, are the barriers and gotcha. we have to figure out a way to negotiate those barriers okay let me thank you bj appreciate that let me ask you all some educational questions all right. <coughs> educational questions all right did you learn about juneteenth in school no. <laughs> okay, let me, I'm, 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 let me take a tally of her. No. Right. I, I actually, I learned about Juneteenth when I moved to Texas. Okay, but you didn't learn about it in school, though. That's all. No. That's what I care about. No. Did I, you I, learn I, about the no. Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre in 1921 no. in school? No. Yeah, no. I didn't. No. And 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 elementary school or high school? No. High school. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Okay. When when I went to my HBCU, I heard about it. But okay, but you didn't learn about it. Didn't learn about the details. It. Heard about it. Uh, excuse yeah. me. Do do everybody on the panel know that when you talking about the Gap Band? Yes, the Gap Band song. Drop the bomb, bomb on me. Drop the bomb on me. Yeah. Talk yep. To, As a matter of fact, the, the GAP at the Gap Band are three <laughs> cities in in Oklahoma. The th yeah. the street. It was three streets. Three they, streets. They, they, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Tori. Tori. Yeah. That's what I mean about who's going to teach us. Yeah. No, no, that's no. my point. I, 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 no, no. I, Tori, I need you to teach us. Don't you answer this question. I respect every. I, I hear you, but again, sometimes you just got to let things you got to let things manifest. Tori, you cannot drop. answer this and next that's question. Where I, I respect Caleb. You cannot answer this next question. Okay. Because you, I know you know it. Who is Hiram Rebels? Wait for it. <laughs> Hyvum Rebels was the first African American senator elected in February 25th in 1870. 
things you should know in school, right? Things you should learn, right? You know about the 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 uh, Christopher Columbus and the and the, and the Nina the the Santa and what you call it, right? You learned all about that, okay? Now, here's another one for you. Did you know, or do you know about voter suppression for African Americans throughout history? You know about that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you know about guessing the jelly beans in a jar? Yeah. Yeah. It was a equivalent. It was basically it was a equivalent of a poll tax, is what it was. Yeah. Okay, that's my next question. Do you know about the poll tax, which is about a roughly two dollars and fifty cents? And at that time, black folks was making about three hundred dollars a year. Or mm -hmm. yep. or the, the five dollar Indian. <laughs> or no 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 the nickel Indian. It wasn't even five dollars. It was a nickel. <laughs> and here, it was and a nickel. Indian <laughs> did, you, did you also Here's know? And here's, and here's how I know about the poll tax, because our grandfather on our mother's side, um, I was going to, I did a column like years ago on the whole voter ID situation. I was talking to my uncle about it because uh, voter ID is not a poll tax. It's just proving who you are. But what was interesting was my uncle told me that when his, when he was, when he would go with his father to go vote, he would have to, you know, sign your name. But grandfather couldn't write because he only had a third grade, you know, second grade. He didn't have a formal education, so he had to sign an X. But like, no, you can't do that. Or you had to, you know, how many jelly beans are in this jar? Exactly. Or, or do you have a dollar or a dime? So we're only, you know, 100 years removed. Actually, more like six years removed from actual poll taxes. Exactly, because that actually went away. Um, it actually, the Voting Rights Act 1965 started it, but it did not actually get removed to 1970. And that's not that far at all. I was born so, in 69. Exactly. So the poll tax was still live and strong when you was born. Ain't that something? And also, too, did you all also know that folks down south had to take a literacy test for they can vote as well? They had to re recite clauses of the Constitution and learn know about civics. See, what I'm saying is this. Well, actually, I don't have a problem with that because I believe everybody should know civics where they take their ass to go vote and screw shit up. No, shit, no, because at the point, the school system, the school system that you was raised in, for one, my brother, you you grew up in uh, going to school in, in Islam, uh, Islamic school. So well, no, that's I what to, James. No, I went, to, I went to Islamic school until I was in third grade. Correct. <laughs> uh, you Hold on, time out. Say it again. I went to Islamic school until I was in third grade. Then and then I went from to there, hold on, hold on, because I know the story, so I'm, I'm going to get it straight before I tell it. And yeah. from there, you were in what school? I went to, went to public school, a block, block and a half from my house. And from where was that at? Where was that at? In Chicago. Okay. But I do also went to the the the, the, the Limbloom Tech, which is the actual smartest school <laughs> On the south side of it, Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And graduated. Again, I high know the school. story. I just didn't. I wanted him to say it. At 16. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he's, that's that part where he's, he, he, you're saying the facts. The now, same thing now. is like, the same thing is like when I'm telling y'all that there, these, these IPL, the, the IPS schools, that's because what they're doing, uh, what they call that Shabazz, where they're buying oh, all these second. houses. When they're what? I'm sorry. They're buying all the houses. So a gentrification? Yeah, gentrification. So when I'm understanding, like, these schools, anybody who moved to Indianapolis, they'll tell them, do not move your child into IPS. But they don't understand that there's three IPS schools in the middle middle that is five stars. Right. But I guess... And now, with that being said, that those schools are 80% white. And you couldn't tell somebody from Indianapolis that that school even exists. Right. But that you got to get into this school through a lottery. So who runs the lottery? Well, see, here's the thing, though, too, right? Everything, all those questions I just mentioned are not black history. Those questions are American history. And those are items and bits and pieces of history that everybody needs to know. So, and when I say the kids need to be need to be taught, you know, uh, our history, or need to be taught the, maybe the concept, or like I said, critical race theory is just a framework. It's not an actual class or course or anything whatsoever. It is the framework 
and understanding where you've been to see where you're at, understand where you're going. So that in so many words is what it is. So now I want to, it's going to be a part two to this, which we're going to kind of uh, lean over, not not tonight, obviously, but we're going to go into the political side of it and why there are seven states here in our lovely U.S. of A. that are, have banned critical race theory from being taught in the school systems in those states. That's not on this podcast, but that's coming soon to a podcast. Let, let, let's, let's say this and keep it 100. How many people know that D.C. is, is not a state? It's a district. Yep. It's a district. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? How many people really know when you say, you know, um, what we're talking about uh, is the Federal Reserve part of the United States government? Yeah, but we'll get into that tour. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to touch it right now. Right. That's kind of off, you know what I'm saying? That's getting off. That's so, getting off task. Yeah, getting off. Yeah, getting off yeah. That, yeah. That, that's that's yeah. for next week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay tuned. Same bad time. Yeah. Same bad time. Yeah. Once, once, once people start to understand that, that's yes. why, again, James, understand it has to be taught. Now, will it be defined? Because listen to the last word. It's just theory. They okay. call me a they call me a conspiracy theory third person. But Torn, I tell right. them you can't call me that because everything I talk about is facts. Well, okay, but but Tory, 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 get this. This is the problem. The problem is I got my ed education in the barber chair with you. Well, I, I didn't get my education at the IPS school you're talking about. Right, but here's but the thing: I, I got my I got my education in the streets. I got my education in the barber chair. There was guys like you. There was guys like Abdul on the radio. There was guys like Jamil that I came across selling cars. This is where education comes from. No, I so, hear what you're saying. But again, the mind is the most powerful thing on this earth. And James, you but, but, give but, it, once the, you but, give that mind that seed. But the, the problem the, 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 the problem is, Kayla, this is what I'm trying to tell Kayla. My name's the Kyla. Kyla, Kyla, I'm Kyla. Sorry. come Kyla. on, get it right. Kyla, I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> the problem is the schools are not our educators. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, no, no let me break this down. How you, this, this, this basic is degree of competence. How do you pay that, that forward then? If, you're, if you Ms. are Kyla. not trusting the schools, how are you paying that forward to the next generation? How do you how do you how do you pay the schools? You pay your schools through your tax dollars. No, and I so, said I mean pay that forward as in how are you personally then influencing the next generation of black men? Look, that is my question. I, I took them. I, I, took I did them it. Barber, I, I took them. I took them. I took them to, to Tory's barbershop. Like, 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 like you personally, like, what, Mike, Mike, let, let me let me try to tell y'all. So, we need story. to take them all to do it. Yeah, yeah, line them up. <laughs> right. about, I'm gonna tell you about two, two different uh. stories that's very, I'm gonna tell y'all two different stories that's very important. All right, my daughter went to Park Tutor, and Miss Kyla, um. My my mom for Parents Day. My mom and my dad is in Illinois, and my wife's people in Texas. So she said, "Dad, will you please come with me?" And she said, um, "I said I'll come." So I go to World Civ class, and in World Civ class, they're talking about uh, should Jerusalem, the people uh, who, who should be there. And as they explain in these Israel and the Jerusalem people, they show this woman from leaving uh, her 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 uh, home, and she has a key on her back, and the key is gold. And I've always told my kid, my my kids, look at colors. Everything always matter. It's a code there. You just gotta identify. So when she said this person is leaving her house, but she's taking her key with her, and I said, why did you? I, I I stopped the class. I said, why did you say that this woman is leaving when you know she was forced out? Palestine. I'm sorry. I'm going to get it right. The Palestinians in, 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 in Israel. And I said, why are you telling them that? This woman didn't choose to leave. She was forced out. 
record. All right, so she let that one pass. And then she started doing some other things, and I caught her on those things. And next thing she, I knew, um, she said, <clears throat> she, you know, how can I say this? Because I don't want to get people in trouble. So oh, man, she asked my daughter, she, she, I asked my daughter, because I stopped her on three, four things. I stopped the whole class and asked her why she's saying it this way. And she said, she, I, 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 I asked Trinity, Trinity, what did her teacher say? And I went and talked to the lady. And she said, Mr. Terrell, I can't say what you said because the, she has a lot of Jewish kids and she would be considered what, a, what, what they call those people that hate Jews. Set, set them Anti -Semitic. Anti -Semitic. Yeah, she said, that's why I can't say what you said. And she said, I built this curriculum over for over 20 years. So I hear what James is saying and I hear what you're saying. And I'm just pulling y'all both together and saying, this is the reality of what we have to, what we have to do. It has to come from both halves. Right. But the more that we talk about it, and become conscious. The, the two it. things that separate us, James, bro, I'm gonna tell you: religion and nationality. Well, I tell you, I tell you this, Tori. Thank you for that. We have to get, a, get wrap it up. All and right. I, but I wanted to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to to Kyla, on this podcast. I'm only a phone call away, and whatever you want from me, <laughs> we gonna sit down, and I'm gonna give you everything I got. Okay. He's gonna he gonna give you the, the, the headquarters diploma. Okay. Abdul, Abdul. Yes, sir. Abdul. Right here. I'm your biggest fan. Call me. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. We're gonna do a part two, and the part two is is um, is titled Color Lines, and Tory. that's basically Tory. Yes, I need to line up. Uh, I, hey, I got you. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a part two. And that's gonna that's gonna be called title color lines, and this right here is talking about how uh, the red and the blue, and how the, about these states, uh, seven of them uh, so thus far are banding critical race theory to be taught in those states. So that's coming to a podcast near you. All right, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy, can I say Jimmy, this? Jimmy, can Most I say people this? must understand every governor is the president of that state. Until the president calls something in and be, it becomes federal at that time. Gotcha. What were you going to yeah. say, James? This discussion is not the, the discussion of systematic racism. It's not new. It, it, it's, it's we don't need laws. We, it, no, we don't need we don't need it, laws. It, it's, a, it's a topic that we should be discussing all the time. We Not need po we need policy. Here. We need changes in policy and processes and procedures. Yeah. What this podcast is actually uh, uh, done is is that it's making other folks aware. This is more awareness than anything. This is more education than anything. There are tons of folks that want to talk about it. There are tons of people that want to be involved in and understanding more about this critical race theory. But at the same token, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, none of us are experts. Of course, I, Abdul. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, the you know, only expert. You know, but <laughs> but that's that's subjective, right there. No, I'm sure clear on that. no, I love my brother to death, but that is subjective. <laughs> he knows it. You know, I'm his urban sounding board. We'll talk about that in a later date. But anyway, I want to thank you, BJ, James, Abdul, Tori, my baby girl hey, Kyla, for Jamil, joining the podcast. Jamil. Yes. I had a great time, man. Please invite me back. Yes. Don't yes. worry. It's good to see you. Abdul, you my dude. Kyla, <laughs> we're going to keep debating. BJ, call me. <laughs> Let's go at it. That's right. And I want to thank you guys. And for all the listeners out there, thank you for listening. Please visit us, visit us at menspeakingout.com. You can, you can reach us on Apple, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Google Play, and all the other podcasts out there. Thank you very much. God bless. Peace. All right.